Now let's compare the results from SI Wave with and without the HFSS regions. Right click the SI Wave only solution and select Compute Differential S parameters. The software displays a list of automatically generated differential port pairs. Click on the Compute Differential S matrix button to populate the list of matrix entries. SI Wave automatically displays the end to end transmission terms for the two diff pairs. We want to compare these results with HFSS regions. Electronics Desktop provides a powerful and convenient post processor, so click the Plot in Electronics Desktop button. Desktop is launched and shows the same plots. Now hide the desktop for a moment. We go back to SI Wave, select the solution using HFSS regions, and generate the differential S parameters. Again, we export the plot to Electronics Desktop. Now in Desktop, we can overlay the two plots to compare them. We see that the results are very similar, up to about 5 GHz. At higher frequencies, we see that the HFSS region solution predicts a stronger attenuation than the standard SI Wave solution. At this point, we can easily create a plot of the differential S11 or return loss values with and without HFSS regions. As shown here, the results are also quite similar, up to about 5 GHz. Above 5 GHz, the solution with HFSS regions shows higher return loss. This is consistent with what we saw for the transmission terms, and it indicates the increased return losses are due to 3D effects in the via fields at the ends of the differential pairs. To look at this one other way, we create a new plot of the backward crosstalk between the differential pairs. We select corresponding backward crosstalk signals from the two solutions. We can see that the crosstalk is about 10 dB higher when HFSS regions are used. This is an indication that 3D coupling between the vias and the HFSS regions is important. Finally, let's see what the impact of the HFSS regions was on the simulation time. Go back to SI Wave, right click on each solution, and choose View Profile. Here we show the simulation profiles for SI Wave with and without the HFSS regions. If we subtract the finish time from the starting time, we find that SI Wave standalone took 10 hours and 39 minutes due to the high complexity of the board. The runtime with HFSS regions was 12 hours and 25 minutes. That means it took about an hour and 45 minutes more, or about 16% more compute time to use the HFSS regions. This is a relatively small price to pay to obtain the increased accuracy for these critical nets. Let's look at the memory now. SI Wave standalone had peak memory usage of 67 gigabytes here. SI Wave Solver using HFSS regions needed about the same amount of memory, but the HFSS Solver required 88 gigabytes. So there was approximately a 30% increase in peak memory usage with the HFSS regions. As a general rule, 3D region solutions are going to require more memory than 2.5D solutions alone in SI Wave. Remember, this is a large board, over 60 centimeters long, with more than 20 metal layers. As we mentioned, trying to do the entire board in a 3D solver isn't practical. Solving just the cutout region in HFSS took 30 hours and 39 minutes on the cluster and required 55 gigabytes of peak memory. Considering its size and complexity, these simulation times are quite reasonable. Combining SI Wave with HFSS regions offers the benefit of faster simulation time with fewer computational resources than a full 3D solution, while giving accurate S parameter results for the critical nets. In order to demonstrate this accuracy, we'll perform a TDR analysis shortly, and you'll be impressed by the correlation between HFSS and SI Wave with HFSS regions. So far, we've compared frequency domain results. We can also compare the results in the time domain using time domain reflectometry, or TDR analysis. A TDR plot shows the effective impedance of the system as a function of time and distance. It helps to pinpoint what parts of the structure are being treated differently by the different solution techniques. To get the complete picture, we'll also compare the SI Wave results with a simulation performed entirely within HFSS. To do this, we used SI Wave to create a small cutout region of the board, encompassing the two differential pairs, and exported it to HFSS 3D layout. For the full blown HFSS simulation, start by drawing a rectangular extent in SI Wave to capture the desired region of the board, and use the Clip Design option to create a cutout. Export this cutout to HFSS 3D Layout. This is the clipped region in 3D Layout. It measures about 10.5 by 2.5 centimeters. In the Co-Simulation Options dialog, select HFSS as the simulator. Define the HFSS setup, 
create an interpolating sweep, and run the simulation. We ran this on a Windows compute cluster using 28 cores and solving up to 16 frequency points in parallel. The HFSS simulation took about 30 hours. After the simulation is complete, right-click the setup and go to Matrix Data. Press the Export Matrix Data button to generate the touchstone file. This concludes the video. Stay tuned for part 3, where we'll compare the TDR results.